All right. Very excited about this. I want to make sure I got all my settings right. If you if you are just now signing in, let me know where you're signing in from, what city, what state, what country, and I want to talk to you. Let's figure out how we can go live. I know some of you may have been thinking about going live. You're just not exactly sure how to get started. Maybe you're a little nervous. I'd like to know what's holding you back. If you don't mind, put in the comments, what is it you feel like is holding you back right now? Uh, what do you think you would need to get started? Um, sometimes it's just getting out of our own head, right? I know for me, that was that was part of it. So um, feel free to put in the comments. Is it technology? What, what is it that's holding you back? I'd love to help walk you through that. I'm going to discuss um, what I've come up with today. Is it, we're going to call it TLC, okay? So we're going to go through what's TLC. These are the three things I think that's going to be the most pivotal in you being able to do a great job on doing live streaming. Looking forward to doing a little bit of training. This is, you're helping me prepare, prepare, actually, because I'm doing a little bit of training with uh, Sh Sinead Moray's group uh, next week. Look forward to that. And we're going to be kind of going more in depth with this. But I want to kind of give you kind of somewhat of a primer of what we can think about when going live, okay? So we're going to go through these in just a moment. But again, let me know where you're signing in from, what city, what state, what, what country. While you're doing that, I'm going to make sure I'm actually online. Hopefully we're online. If you're watching either from LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube, let me know. And I'm just checking now. Looks like, oh, all right. We already got some responses. That's fantastic. We've got Charlene is here. Thank you, Charlene. She's coming from Brooklyn, New York. She says fear and overthinking. Yes, yes. You know, a lot of folks feel that same way. Um, Chandra, she says, yes, moving out of my own way, overthinking Watching from YouTube, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Okay, very good. All right, folks. So let's get right into this. I want to kind of get into this. Can you guys hear me okay? Is the sound working okay? I want to make sure the sound's working okay as well before I get too, too far into this. Okay, now as I'm getting into this, I have a question for you before I get started. I want to know, what's your favorite breakfast? This is actually, this is actually something you can use on your live show. So put in the comments here, what's your favorite breakfast? I'd love to see that. All right. And that, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why, why I asked you that question. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through TLC and I'm going to explain what these are. Okay. What these, what these components are. The first one I'm just going to tell you is, is going to be the tech. Some people, they get, they get scared of the tech part. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of break that down. It's actually easier than you think. And then the other thing here that we want to discuss with you is the look and the feel of the show. Okay, you want to start visualizing, visualizing what what do I want my show to look like? What do I want to give in terms of a feeling? How do I want my audience to feel when they watch my show? Like they're part of a community, if they're being educated. Um, connection. What 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 feeling would you like to invoke when someone watches your show and they walk away from your show? What feeling do you want them to have about either you or your show or about themselves? Those are those are things that you want to do as well. Okay. The other one is going to be that we're going to address is the content. Now, someone mentioned. I think Chandra. She mentioned that. You know, it's it's overwhelming. Charlene, Charlene mentioned overwhelming and, and overthinking. So that's why I wanted to show you. It's just really just these three things. If you just focus on these three things, uh, I shouldn't say focus, but you just get them out of the way, you're well on your way to uh, a great show. One of the first things I do when I ask people, you know, when they want to go live is, you know, so like, what's your goal? Like, what do you want to accomplish with your show? Um, they're already thinking about what technology they're using before these other things. And, and the reason why this is first is not because it's the most important. It's because TLC was a very famous um, group when I was growing up. And so, I, and of course, it's also uh, known as uh, T Tender Loving Care as well. Um, even Aretha Franklin, if, if you're a little bit older, she had a song that, that, uh, that I think uh, touched on it. But here's the thing. I just want to come up with something easy to remember, okay? Tech is actually not the most important out of this. The most important out of all of this is probably 
the feeling that you want to invoke with your audience. And the most important would be the content because without the content, uh, no one's really going to want to watch. I've, I've actually learned that the hard way. <laughs> it, has, it has to be content that your audience is very interested in hearing about. Okay, so the reason why I asked you to put in your favorite breakfast, I wanted to ask you a question that everyone knows the answer to. And they usually don't have any problem sharing an answer about. Okay, so I asked you about what's your favorite breakfast. I see Leon says oh, oatmeal. And let's see, Chandra says oatmeal or smoothies. Charlene says French toast and scrambled eggs. Love that. Okay. My favorite is probably going to be pancakes and or waffles and bacon and scrambled eggs. So, hey, look, some of us have like a lot of the same breakfast in mind. But try that with your show. Ask something simple that, you know, everybody can answer. Okay, that's probably something that I'd, I'd like to do. And then you also want to maybe incorporate some fun things as well. Things that kind of show a little bit of your personality when you're giving the show. Because I think the more genuine you are, the better that that feeling that you want is going to come across. If you try and be something you're not, um, it's going to be hard to transmit that feeling and it may get misinterpreted, whatever that is. So think about what is it that you want to accomplish with your show. So in the comments, I want you to answer to me. If you were to have a live show and you were start, you were able to start today, think about a subject that you can talk about without studying it, without researching it. You can just stand up and give a 20 minute talk on it. What is that about? Tell me what it's about. Tell me in the comments. Leon says, as a talking point, I thought when I saw the preview for this session, I thought TLC could be title, length, and content. I like that too. That's a good one. Now, one thing I have uh, uh, figured out, Leon, with the content piece is that you can have great content, but if you don't have a title that gets people's attention, no one's going to watch it, right? So to Leon's point, and let's talk about that because it seems like with this group, this is going to be a big, a big part of this. So with content, you want to come up with a topic or a title that's on the minds of your audience. So think about your audience first. What's on their minds? And I, I agree with what uh, Chandria says. Sometimes we just have to get out of our own head with it when it comes to this live thing. We're thinking through things, scenarios, scenarios that really just don't even happen. Like one scenario I know some people are probably scared about. You can tell me if you feel the same way is they're scared about what if you have a troll or somebody doesn't like you they get on there and they tear you down what what about what about if you have that that tell me if that's if that's across any of your minds i'm curious oh lisa's here hi lisa welcome to, welcome here hi how do you as well uh lisa says she wants to do a show about brand awareness okay whose brand whose brand do you want them to be aware of your brand or are you going to help people other people uh have their brand put out there. Just curious. That, that that's actually makes a difference on how you're going to do the show. So when you say brand awareness, be specific. Like, are you trying to make them aware of your personal brand or are you helping others, um, you know, uh, put their personal brand out there? Okay. Uh, Leon says trolls build thick skin. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark says Rollis, go Rollis. All right. Awesome. I appreciate all your support. Okay. So one of the things I'll say about trolls, I've done about 170 shows. I've yet to have a troll yet. Now, where you're going to get your trolls possibly, uh, well, I did have one spammer, but I didn't have any trolls. Where you're possibly going to get those is as your, as your show grows, you're going to have more of a risk of that. But even some of the bigger creators, like you look at Shanae's uh, live, if you've ever looked at Shay Robottom's live, I don't really see those folks on there. I don't see trolls. So if, if they're getting four, five, 6,000 views, Per live show and they're not getting trolls. I don't think you and I have anything to worry about right now. Okay, so let's just, one of the things I like about Dale Carney, he wrote this book, it's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And whenever you have a fear, think about what's the probability of that fear happening. And before that, what's the worst case scenario? So let's say a worst case scenario, someone trolls your, your show. Block them. Delete the comments. Ignore it. And they'll never be able to come, they'll never, never be able to, to, to call it back on your show again. That's worst case scenario. You can just do that. Um, but what's the probability of that happening? If you're not generating probably over, based on my experience, five or 6,000 views, you're probably not going to have a troll anyway because trolls go where, where there's high, high traffic. So they're probably going to be looking at something else. So don't worry about the trolls right now. Tell me what else you worry about. What, what else? What else holds you back? That could be holding you back 
um, from the lives. Um, one of the things I will say that's been great about the lives that I've had uh, is you get a chance to build community. And so the people in the live who are watching your lives will start communicating with each other, which makes your your whole show even that much better. Last year, we had several of them uh, that, that were I saw were, were just constantly commenting and they were constantly coming on the show day after day. And so we created this little group. It was a little message chat within uh, LinkedIn. And it was called the LinkedIn uh, Live VIPs. So they're my LinkedIn Live VIPs. And I would get ideas from them. They would help me. They would support the show. So even if it's just one other person, just start your own community with your own live. Like each of you, I want to make sure each of you who are watching this show, make sure that you're interacting with each other. Like those who are here, all of you are interested in live streaming. So why not connect with anybody else who's in, who's watching this live stream? So if anyone who you see is commenting, try and connect with that person because you already have something in common. You're both very interested in doing live streaming. Okay. So Elisa says no trolls because of a warm audience. That's a great point. See, so if you've got a warm audience that is really connecting with your content, they like you, you like them, they're going to help push those trolls out for you. So that's a great point. I love that, Lisa. Mark says, I'm a troll. No, you're not. You're not a troll. <laughs> uh, Mark says, nothing is holding me back from the lives. I'm just not good about getting people to come to my live. That's a great one. Okay. So here's the, here's the thing. Number one, Make sure your content is solid and that your audience is clear about what you're going to be talking about. And as far as promotion goes, there's different things you can do. I will say this. There's, if, if I don't have a good title, I'm noticing, I, I, we, we talked about this is the, actually this week. We've noticed if we don't have a good title for this thing and we're not clear and intentional about what we're going to talk about, the viewership just plummets. It plummets big time. So I would suggest to definitely think through what, what your topic is going to be. Whenever you have guests on the show, that's the first thing they're going to ask you is, hey, so what's the topic going to be? What's the theme going to be? So if you don't know what it is, start figuring that out before you put out a show, okay? That's a good thing to think about. All right. One of the things, too, that I was noticing whenever we were doing our shows and getting it off the ground is make it like an event, at least your first couple of shows. I'd say your first, I'd say at least your first half dozen shows. Do an event, create the event, invite people to come to your event through LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever platform you're using, create an event, invite your friends to it. Even if it's just a couple of people that you know, that you know will support you, make sure those guys are on and make sure that they're ready to comment. Okay. So make, so engagement helps to get more exposure to your live. So once you, people start to come on, encourage them like I did at the beginning. Hey, let me know where you're signing in from. That's something easy. Everybody knows where they're from. You get some of them to start typing that in. You start asking questions. I ask you what's your favorite breakfast. Everybody likes to talk about their favorite breakfast, right? And then sometimes I'll, what I'll do is even when I have a, uh, a show, uh, uh, a show, a guest on the show, I'll ask other interesting questions. And I was just, you know, just the other day, Shanae in, in a meeting was saying that one of the things she appreciated about my show, which I, I, I'm so glad she shared this and I've heard it from others, is that I ask very interesting questions because if they do a lot of interviews, especially someone like that who does tons of interviews, they're going to get asked the same questions over and over again. It can be a bit monotonous for them. Um, even for those who've never been on a show before, because I have a lot of first timers. I have more first timers on my show than I do those who are established, right? So I'm not I'm not running a shop where I'm only going to interview you if you're famous or something like that. I just I just I don't, I don't I just that's just not me. I like to take I actually appreciate having the experienced people who've been on lots of shows, but I also appreciate the ones who've never been on a show and seeing them have their experience for the first time. Out of the hundred and some odd guests guests that I've had. I would say probably 70 of them have never been on a show before. And so a lot of times I'll ask them, this is what I think you should do. So let's say when you have somebody on, on the show and you interview them and you know, it's a great experience. It was their first time. Ask them at the very end, what do they think? How was it? So it's your first time. How was it today? And they're feeling good. They just say, oh, it was a great time. It was wonderful. You did great, blah, blah. And then you're recording that, right? And so you take that as a clip. You capture that in the future. So the next time you want to ask somebody who you don't know to be on the show, you can say, hey, here's a clip of someone who was recently on my show. Then you also mix it in with someone who you know that is more established. Perhaps they have a bigger following than you. You have them on the show as well. And then you ask them the same question. How was it? How did you enjoy the show? 
I think that really using that is, is, a, is a very good tool um, in helping to get other folks on your show. Now, how, how many of you actually want to have guests on your show? If you want to have guests on your show, say yes. Put that in the comments if you don't mind. Uh, Mark says, better interview me because I'm going to be, uh, <laughs> he says, he's going to be famous soon. I'm sure you will, of course. But guess what? I don't, I don't interview people just because I think they're going to go famous. I just interview people who I want to interview. How about that? So I'll interview you anyway. Definitely going to get you on one of these days, Mark. Okay. Mark says, multi-purpose use of live is awesome. I have 10 best bits from finding your voice show. Now, I don't want to get too technical with you guys, but I will say this. When you do your live show, there are so many other ways you can leverage that content. You can turn it into mini clips. You can turn it into a podcast. You can turn it into an article, all from that live that you do. And if you have guests on the show, now you can leverage their audience as well as your audience whenever you do make those micro clips, the podcast, the articles, and all those other things. So let's see. Mark says yes. Lisa says yes. Robert says yes. And Charlene says yes. Okay, good. So I'm going to give you some tips on that. Now, by the way, along as, as we go along this thing, because I'm focusing right now, I'm focusing on content and look and feel. If anyone has any tech questions, feel free and put them in the comments. And I may answer them now or I may answer them later. It depends on how involved your question is. I, and one of the things I can just tell you, I, sometimes I go overboard when I explain stuff when it comes technical, um, and I don't want to lose anybody. So, so just so, go ahead and put the, put your tech questions in there. I probably know the answer, maybe I don't, but if I think it's think it's a little too hairy, I'll I might just answer it later for you. Okay, so we're we're going to focus on these two because I think the bunch who's on today, I want to cater to you because you spent your time with me. I want to make sure it's extremely valuable. So. Let's talk about um, having guests on the show. So, first of all, we talked about this. You want to make sure with your content, you've got a topic in mind, what you're going to talk about. And don't be too stuck on the format of your show, because what you're going to find is until you start putting the show out, you're going to start wanting to change it anyway. So don't be too stuck to a certain concept. And your your audience may end up giving you better ideas on how to do the show than you even came up with. I know that's happened with us. There's certain things we do on the show now. I just never would have thought to do on my own. There's certain things I've tried I wouldn't have continued to do had uh, my my audience had not had they not held up their hand and said, "Hey, look, keep doing that." Okay, so definitely keep your mind open on shifting. But what you do want to have is an overriding theme of your show, the kind of look and feel you want to have. Is it going to be casual? Is it more academic? Is it more of a networking thing? Like what kind of look and feel you want to have? That will determine the type of guests you want to have, which now determines what your content will generally be. Now, before you approach that guest, it is helpful if you have one or both things put together. One of them is the overall format and theme of your show, of what you envision first. And then the topic that you want to discuss with that person. Now, what I would suggest before you suggest a topic, go look at their LinkedIn profile. Look at what they're already putting out to the community. So let's say I'm going to use an example here. Who wants to participate in my little uh, exercise here? If you want to participate in my exercise, I'm going to, I'm going to take notice of the first person who responds. Um, and we will, I, will, you will, I will involve you in my experiment. Okay, let's see who puts their hands up first. Oh, Leon says, do you prepare your guests with predetermined questions? I feel like you don't based on what I've seen. I feel like you have a more authentic feel when it's a natural conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Leon knows me. He knows me well. I do. Generally, I do not prepare specific questions unless it's a certain guest that they're a little bit more. Some guests are more particular and they kind of want to have more of a question list. Um, I will say the higher the position of the person um, they're more likely going to want to have that laid out. You're going to want to have to have some basic questions. But now the questions I do have are generally prepared off of what I see on their LinkedIn profile or what I know about the person. Okay, so who says they want to participate first? Okay. Uh, Leon. Leon says me. Okay, here's what we want to do, guys. What I want you to do, I want everybody to go to Leon Fress's 
uh, I want you to go to his profile right now since he was the first one that responded. He's on, I don't know if you guys can see him. He's on YouTube. So I see him coming off YouTube. So everyone goes to Leon. Leon, hopefully you have a LinkedIn profile. I think you do. I think we're connected on LinkedIn. So go to Leon's profile on LinkedIn. And I want you to pretend you're going to have link have Leon as a guest on your show. Now you're going to approach Leon to be a guest on your show. And you want to let him know what your topic is going to be. I think that your topic should be something that's based off something he has on his profile because we know that's what he feels comfortable talking about. So you're going to have a conversation with him and your conversation is going to be based on something you see on his profile. And I want you to be able to, to go to his profile and tell me what you, what you would uh, interview him about. If you cannot find Leon Fresses, this L E O N last name F R E S S. If you cannot find his profile, Leon, if you don't mind, can you put your LinkedIn um, profile in there, please? Put your LinkedIn profile. Secondarily, we can do it with Mark as well. Mark Bent Cover. He was the second one who said yes. So either go to Mark Bent Covers or go to, to uh, Leon Fresses. And what I want you to do is quickly just look at his profile for a second and tell me what you would want to interview him about. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going to look at some of these comments here. Got some great comments. All right, so we've got here. Uh, okay, by the way, Leon, he had a, he had a great. He says about predetermined questions. One of the mistakes I see often is that an interviewer has a long prepared list of questions that they're asking someone. <laughs> someone's calling while I'm doing a live. They have a long list of prepared questions that they want to ask this particular uh, person. And what ends up happening is it doesn't feel very natural because when you're having a conversation with someone, uh, I don't care if it's a client meeting, if you're just doing networking, if you're just having a, a, a conversation with your friends, do you have a list of questions with you? No. Now, what it is important for you to do is know about the individual. You do some research about the individual and that will help you with your questions. But in most cases, for it to feel natural, you don't want to have a long list of questions. I would suggest, though, just to help for nervousness case, to have maybe two or three, maybe four questions that you definitely want to ask this person in the interview. But here's what I want you to do. When you ask the person a question and they answer you in that question, Listen intently, and I want you to pick out two to three words or a phrase out of what they said that you would like them to clarify more or drill down more. Does that make sense? So let, let's go back to my let's go back to my exercise. I, I want to I want because I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'm, I'm going to show you an example of how that would be. Okay, so uh, Robert asked a question: Are you using a wireless or wide wired mic? Right now, I'm using a wireless. I'm using a Sennheiser wireless mic, but usually, usually I use this. Today I'm not. I'm using just a wireless because it's a bit too hard to write on the, on the screen here. Okay. All right. So, uh, so as I look through this, let's see if we have some folks who are ready to interview Leon. Leon, did you put, okay, Leon put his, he put his profile there. And okay. Mark says, apparently Leon is in love with his daughter. You and HR. So my first question would be, which do you love more, your daughter, <laughs> Rollis, or HR? <laughs> well, okay, so Mark has the right idea. So in the interview, those are two themes that you want to talk to Leon about. You want to talk mostly about HR, but you do want to have an opportunity to talk about his daughter, get to let him talk about his daughter as well. So you might want to ask him, hey, you know, I saw that because this is what I actually saw this on his profile. I saw that recent picture of your beautiful daughter and she was I forgot what she was doing. But I remember I saw that on, on, on Leon's profile. Uh, she was doing something. I don't know if she's won an award or something. But she's just a beautiful daughter. So I would ask him to talk about his daughter. Well, tell me about that picture I saw on your profile. Tell me more about it. What was the event? That sort of thing. Have him talk about that. And he, you're going to see Leon's face just light up. He's going to love talking about his daughter, right? Which helps give the, that whole look and feel. It goes back to look and feel of the show. Because you want your guests to feel comfortable. You want them to enjoy the experience. And when they enjoy the experience, guess what? Your audience will too, right? So keep that in mind whenever you're interviewing them. 
I, I like what, what Mark did. He looked at both the vocational side of him, HR, and then what actually drives Leon would be his daughter, no doubt, based on what he and I have both seen on his profile. Now, Robert says, I'd like to talk about talk to Mark about his acting career and video production. I would, too. If I was going to interview Mark, I would want to ask him about his experience as an actor, what it's like to, you know, go for a part, you know, having to, you know, do the, what do they call that thing? What do they call it when they go for a part? I forgot. Audition, yes. When they audition for a part, you know, what it's like there. I know he's done some post-production stuff, so he's done some editing and stuff like that, some camera work. I'd love to ask him about those things. What you know, if I want to make a if I want to make my live show better, what would you suggest I do for my lighting? I might I might ask Mark some questions about just whatever I think that Mark knows a lot about. That's what I'd ask him about. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Leon says my daughter will be mentored by Rollis and HR. That's funny. Awesome response. <laughs> Mark says, "What do you love most about hanging out with your daughter?" Does any of that apply to your work with HR? See, that's a great question. See, Mark, you're already ready. You, you've got content. You, you may have a guest here in Leon on your show, and you could ask him some of these things, ask him some HR questions. Okay, now, here's something else I'd ask Leon. I'd say, Le Leon, what's one of the most common mistakes you see people make when they apply for a job? Maybe on their resume or in the interview process. What's one of those things that's kind of knocked them out? And then what's one of those common things you've seen that have helped that, that particular person get the job? What was it that helped them to get the job? So you're, you're, you're actually giving your audience an opportunity to learn and benefit from what they're watching. Because now the, you're giving your, your audience tips on things they can avoid in looking for their next job and then things they should do on their next job that they might not be doing, Okay. And then for Mark, I would do something similar. You know, if, if I was wanting to get into the acting business, what's one of the first things that you would you, you would suggest that I do? What should I research first? Is this something I should be majoring in school? Should I go join a, the local, um, you know, uh, clubhouse or whatever it is that they do locally for where they have, you know, they get together and do the act, acting groups, whatever they call them. So I would ask Mark those kind of questions. Also, if you're in any sort of type of business that, your LinkedIn show is about, if there's any jargon that you use, you, you explain what the jargon is. So that's one thing I've, I've always tried to do. Sometimes I forget to do it. Sometimes I remember, but just keep that in mind. If you're, if your show is very niche, make sure that you, you're, you're, you're explaining jargon because you don't want to alienate anybody who's watching your show. You want everybody to feel comfortable and that they know what's being talked about, what's being said. Okay. So I have a question for you guys. This is a little fun question. We'll make this fun. And I'm going to go back to the content for a second. Um, would you rather be forced to live in a cage where you couldn't sit or be forced to live in a cage where you couldn't stand? Now, either one of those two is terrible. But I want to know, which one would you pick? Okay. All right. So, oh, Robert says he'd also have Mark play something live. Yes. That would be fun. Um, Mark says Canon XL1S rules. That must be, that sounds like a camera. Um, Leon says, I shared a picture of her on International Women's Day. She's only seven, but I teach her every day how to be open, accepting, and kind to all people in all circumstances, which I feel we as HR professionals should also practice in and out of work. Now, see, that is the framework, actually. Okay, Leon, that's excellent. That's the framework for a show right there. Okay, so... That at least an episode, right? About how we can take kindness, right? Kindness and translate that into HR. Boy, I think people will respond to that. Let's bring the kind back into the uh, recruitment process. Kindness. Oh, I like that. that there, there's a show right there. So you, you, you there's, there's a show at almost anything. You can, there's, but you just got to position it just right. And you want it, you want it to, I, I've also found that when you use words that have to do with emotion and you incorporate that into your title of your posting, uh, the viewership does go up. So keep, in that, keep that in, in, in mind as well. Okay, Mark says he forgot the question. Would you rather, if you had to, be forced to live in a cage where you couldn't sit or be forced to live in a cage where you couldn't stand? Now, nobody wants to be in a cage, but would you rather be standing or sitting, basically? Okay, Mark says, I would appreciate kindness. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Robert says, the answer is always C. No, there's no C. There's no C here. It's only A or B. 
Okay, only A or B. All right. Before I move on here, any questions on what I've covered so far? What, what do you want to hear more about? Content, look or feel, and tech. I've got I've got answers for all these, but I just want to make sure I I want to I want to respect y'all's time because you're on this show, and it's about yeah. I, we're, I'm going to be on for about maybe five more minutes. So, so let me know what, which one. Okay. So Mar- Leon says standing. Mark says, uh, so Mark apparently is standing as well. He says he couldn't take sitting. No, Robert. Sorry. You, you, to participate, you have to pick one. <laughs> I, I would stand. I, I, I would stand. I would not want to have to just sit and not be able to get up. That, that would be tough. So look at Charlene. She says, yes, kindness always rock. I love it. How do you determine the length of your shows? Okay, that's a good that's a good one. I think when I'm by myself, I prefer to do a little bit shorter show, personally. But whenever I have guests, that's when I tend to want to go longer. If you're going to do a panel, I love doing panels. Panels, I love the energy from panels. I love to get different people's takes on things where you have three, four, five people involved. You need you need an hour generally for those because if you if you bring four people on and you're only on for like thirty minutes and each person only talks like five minutes it's, it's not really that yeah that's just my opinion I could be wrong but I know whenever I've been on Shanae's Shanae had me on once and we talked for over an hour it was just a it was just a free flowing natural conversation and then another time she had me on with about three or four other folks that are on in a mastermind uh, that I'm on. And I was on there for I think I think we're on there for about an hour or two. So I don't know. What, what do you what do you guys think? If you're watching a show and it's a live show, have you watched in a whole hour before? Or did you do you find yourself want wanting to jump off after a little while? And by the way, when you watch your lives, do you listen to them or do you watch and listen? I'm curious about that. Because I've actually had some people who tell me they say, Oh, I just love your podcast. I'm thinking, mm, I don't have a podcast. But the reason why they say podcast is because, and I learned this, is because of how they watch it. It's just because some people watch it that way or, or, or consume it that way. They're listening to your show. In fact, a couple of them said that they were listening to my show while they were um, commuting from one place to another. One, one was going on a trip from Florida to Texas and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be listening to your show today. Okay. So uh, let's see. Whatever happened to the car? <laughs> cartoon cartoon Rollis. Yeah, we all retired him for, for now. I, I'll bring him back one day. Uh, Mark says, guess the first half hour is spent getting this background perfect. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Charlie says, a well-done panel it keeps you watching and engaged. Yes. Robert says, he tunes out after 45 minutes. Now, when you tune out, is that, is that when you've seen a panel? Is that when it's been, it's been just one person? Or is it is it been when it, when one person's interviewing one other like a one on one interview? Which ones do you tend to tune out a little faster, Robert? I'm curious. Mark says my talking head lasts a half an hour. My interviews can go for half an hour to an hour, depends on the guest. Like pretty much right now, I'm pretty much at my limit as to as as to how long I'll probably be able to keep your attention to where you have to go on to go to something else. That's why I'm about to close up pretty soon. Um, but I would say on my panels, I would I would suggest. At least forty-five minutes. Mine usually go an hour, um, and they love it. the The people on it love it. And just know, most people are not going to watch your whole show. Most people who come on are not going to sit and watch the whole thing. It's usually only like a handful that will sit and watch it. And also, keep in mind, do not get too caught up with your numbers when you are in the show. It can be very uh, dis, I, sometimes just discouraging. If you're if you're sitting there doing a show. And you only see like one person watching, like, oh, you know, man, this is not going great. Nobody's watching my show right now. So don't get caught up into that because know that it's not really in those who watch live. Most people will watch the replay. Um, in my case, I would say anywhere from eight to time, eight, eight to 10 times the people will watch the replay over the live. And here, here's the thing. That's not it either, because what you can do is give the footage from your live to an editor, have them make several micro clips for you. If you're a mark, you probably do your own. I know I can't do my own, but I do have a team that does it for me. And you make like lots of little bitty small one to two minute clips from your live. That will actually push more people to go back to watch your next show. And I, I, I can tell you more people will probably end up watching your clips than actually watch your live. 
But that's okay. Because some people want to watch the live. Some people just want to watch the clips. That's totally okay, right? Because the goal of your show is to what? Well, you know, you know the answer to that question. I know for me, the, the goal of my show is to connect with more people on LinkedIn in just, in just a little bit different way than I normally would. So uh, hopefully that helps. Now, Robert says content. I'm going to focus on content. Oh, I can see another question coming in. Do you encourage your watchers to share the link before, during, and after? No, but I should. I like, I like Leon's thinking. By the way, Leon, I want to have you on the show. Um, you should do that. Now, what I do before, okay, I, I should say this. Actually, yes, I do. Because before this show today, I went on the Restream account and I created the event where people had an access to the link before the show. So I take that back. Actually, I do before the show. But during the show and after, I don't do it as much. Oh, now here's where, here's where you could do it. And we do this all the time. And so after you do the show, you create you some clips, the best clips from the show. Whenever you put out that clip, make sure in the comments you add a link to the full episode. So in that case, yes, I do it afterwards, Leon, answer your question. Um, Mark says he does his own clips. Robert says he does his own clips. Kudos to you. Do you use Adobe Premiere? My, my, my jam is Adobe Premiere Pro, Pro. I don't know. Which one do you use? Curious. Um Mark says, oh, Robert says, Mark, uh, that's good to know. I was using the same thing. Okay. And then, okay, so no other questions. All right. So so let's go back to, I, I want to make sure I, I did answer all the questions. I really appreciate you guys being so active today. Awesome. I think I, I, think I covered everything. Okay, good. All right. So really quick on your content. This is one thing I want you to think about, Robert, and any, any of the others who are watching. I, there's two styles of making content that I've seen on the platform. One style is you think about your content ahead of time. You make it into a script. You, you write that script out. You record it into the camera. So it's like I'm talking to the camera. You know, hi, I'm Ross Fontenot, blah, blah, blah. I'll go through this, long, this, this script, right? Then I give it to an editor. The editor cuts that script down or cuts that, that, that video down just to the most salient, best parts of that monologue that you did, and they create clips out of that. That's one style you're going to see. The other style, it fits my personality better. I don't, I don't figure out a script. What I do for my content is I think of a topic, and I just start talking about the topic. I prefer to actually talk about the topic in some cases with a guest, which is going to help you with your content. So let's talk about that side of content. If you actually sit there and you do the topic with a guest and you do this 45 minute show, now you've got 45 minutes of content that your editor can edit for you. And then once they edit that down, those micro clips, they can, you can push those out through LinkedIn or you can put on your website, whatever you want to do. Then you can also use a program like Otter to, to, to build a transcript, uh, basically to do a, a transcription of your live show. What I've done with that is I take that and make an article out of it because it doesn't take a whole lot of editing to make an article out of a transcription. It's not, at least for me, it's not. But for me to sit down and say, I'm going to write a thousand word article, it's very daunting. But if it's about me doing a live show for 30 minutes, I'm going to get more than a thousand words out of that and I can make an article out of it. So for me, it's, it's like the ultimate content uh, strategy. And then that, what we've done recently with our shows, like this show here, this will be a podcast. So what my team's going to do is they're going to take this, the audio from this, they're going to take the, the transcript from this and upload it to my podcast. It's a live with Rawless podcast It's available on iTunes um, Spotify, all the major platforms. Just look up live with Rawless. It's a hashtag, all one word, and it'll pull it up. So you'll, you'll be able to hear prior episodes of my show on that podcast. It's very easy to make your live show into a podcast, very easy to make your live show into a transcript, very easy to make your live show into an, into, um, small clips. And I say very easy, either you can learn how to do it or you can hire somebody to know how to do it. And it doesn't cost that much money. Okay. Editing is not very expensive. All right, let me see if I have another question before I close this thing up. 
Oh yeah. Um, hi. Oh yeah. Hi, Nick. So Nick is here. Awesome. And Robert says he loves Otter. Awesome. Hey, Robert says he's written three books using it. I love that. You get this, Robert. Good job. That was awesome. Love that. Okay, guys, listen. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth your time. I went way over the, the time I thought I would. It looks like we spent more time on the content look and feel. We sp spent hardly no time on tech. And I'm glad we did that. It was all because of you, because your questions had to do with more with content than anything else. And I'll just give you some encouragement. Here's one of the things I would encourage you to do. If you're really scared about doing lives and you just, you just, you just, you just have a, a fear of it, I would suggest just do it anyway. Just start record, start recording yourself on your phone. Don't do the live yet, but just record yourself on your phone. Um, take a program like Shanae moray has got a program right now we're going through where you take this video challenge uh, where you just talk it into your phone. I know Shay Robot, she's got a course too, but, but just start practicing by just recording right into your fo your phone, and just record that over several days, and you you get more more comfortable with that. And as you get more comfortable with that, then there's there's not really much of a difference between that and doing a live. In fact, if you're if you're doing zooms, if you do zooms, you basically have done a live show. It's just you only had one or two other people you were doing it with, but that is a live show. The only difference is you're just transmitting it to more people. So think of it that way. Um, and it's not as hard as you think it is. It's back, it's, just like anything else you've done in the past, it's not as hard as you thought it was, right? After you do it, it's old hat. So the key is just really getting started. All right. So, uh, oh, Char Charlene, she loves the standing ovation. Robert says, did my first live where I hosted today literally an hour ago. Hey, that's awesome. Okay. So let's. I want to check with my studio audience and see what they have to say. And look, wow, look at that. They're impressed. So great job. I'm sure you did an awesome job, Robert. Listen, guys, if you got any other questions, feel free and message me. I will be making an appearance a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a little bit, little bit different format, but but similar uh, with Shanae's program. If, you, if you're if you in that Growth Academy, I look forward to connecting with you there. Um, we're doing some things on the recruiting side next week. Those of you who are recruiters. We're unveiling a new coaching program for the for recruiters specifically. Um, love if you want more information. Love to share that with you. Feel free to direct message me. Have a great rest of the day. Stay amazing. I'm looking forward to send me send me links to your show in here too in the comments. Send me a link to your show if you already have one, and we'll support you. All right. And if you want a guest, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to to consider being a guest on your show. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Bye-bye for now. I just want to make sure I give it enough time because there's a, there's a delay. And if I, if I cut it off, I don't want to cut myself off in mid-sentence. So if you guys are still here, appreciate you. Okay, I think we're done now.